Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in again and for joining us this afternoon. Today, we have Beatrice and Rashira with me today, and we will be discussing on the federal court decision of Marachin Abdullah. And the full name of this case is Marachin Abdullah against Ketua Pengara Immigration and another. So there'll Hello, be two everybody. main points. Oh, hi. Hi. sorry. <laughs> so that there'll be two main points that we will be addressing. Firstly, on the imposition of a travel ban, and secondly, the basic structure doctrine of our own federal constitution. So before we delve into the discussion of this case, let me briefly tell you what happened in this case of Marachin Abdullah. Marachin was a chairperson of an NGO known as Perse 2.0 and was a holder of a valid Malaysian passport. But in May 2016, after collecting her boarding pass for a flight to South Korea, at PLIA, she was stopped by the immigration authorities and she was told that there was a travel ban imposed on her and that she cannot leave the country. But there was no reason given to her about the travel ban imposed. She only knew about the reason why she was blacklisted from traveling when a suit was filed against Kato Pengara Immigration in July 2016, the same year. Then it was found out that Maria was blacklisted from leaving Malaysia for three years from 6th of January 2016. And the reason given was that she had disparaged the government of Malaysia, which means Memburukan Keraja Malaysia, at forums and illegal assemblies. So the travel ban imposed on her, however, was lifted two days after this incident of her being informed that she was blacklisted from traveling abroad. So of course, she applied to the High Court to review the decision made to ban her from traveling. And among the reasons stated in this application was that the decision to ban her was baseless, unreasonable, irrational, and completely unfair. And unfortunately, in the High Court, her application was disallowed as there is no constitutional right for a citizen to travel abroad. But of course, she being unhappy with the decision, she appealed to the Court of Appeal, but was also dismissed on grounds that the decision is academic because by then her travel ban had been already lifted. So needless to say, she then appealed to the federal court and there's three questions posed to the federal court. Firstly, on the unfettered discretion that the Director General of Immigration has when imposing a travel ban. Secondly, on a person's right to be heard, uh, which is tied to Section 59 of the Immigration Act, whether it's valid and constitutional because the person will not be, um, be the, person's, the person's right to be heard is actually impeded by this provision. And thirdly, concerning the ouster clause provision, which is Section 59, Capital A of the Immigration Act, which then ties to basic structure doctrine. So as I've said earlier on, our discussion today will be only focused on the travel ban and the basic structure doctrine question. And we'll discuss this in turn. And before we start, I'd like to remind our audience today, if you guys have any questions, please just drop it at our comment section below and we'll address it at the end of the session. So let's start with the first part, which is on travel ban. Um, yeah, maybe Beatrice, you would like to share with us how did the court decide and what did the court decide? Okay, Ken. Uh, hi, everyone. First of all, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. This is the second um, cheat chat, you know, talk on what the federal court says. Um, thank you, Jack, for explaining the facts um, so I don't have to get into that. Um, so the first issue in the case is that you, um, the question is whether the Director General of the Immigration, he has the discretion to impose a travel ban uh, on Malaysians or not. So in particular, can the, the DG impose a travel ban because someone has uh, criticised the government? Uh, because in the present case, the government alleged that Maria Chin basically tarnished his reputation as Verse 2.0 leader. Uh, the majority said that the DG has the discretion to impose a travel ban, but then there must be good reasons. So that means the discretion is not absolute. On the facts of the case, it was wrong for the DG to ban Maria Chin only because she was critical of the government and made statements against the government. 
So therefore, the ban was bad in law and the court struck it down. Looking at the majority decision, one of the judge in the majority um, said that the Director General's internal circular actually didn't provide the power to the DG to blacklist or basically have the authority to impose a travel ban on anyone holding a valid passport for traveling. Uh, the judge actually went further um, in a very extensive um, argument and say that it actually gave no indication of the source of the naming power or any authority or legislation that gives them the power and authority to blacklist or ban Maria Chin. It was not stated in that circular. So the majority also had the opinion that the right of citizens to travel overseas is actually not a right. Um, and therefore, it cannot be a breach of law for the DG to impose a travel ban. However, the DG actually has the power to not give passports or strip a Malaysian of um, their passports or ban or blacklist them in certain circumstances. Um, over the course of the few years, whenever a person is blacklisted under the list, it could be because of various circumstances. For example, if a person is bankrupt or if they have basically committed offenses with regards to uh, finances, such as non-payments of your PTPTN loan, your education loan, tax incomes, um, EPF issues when it comes to company, uh, that sort of reasons. A person who is out of bail, that can also be a person who will not have, uh, you know, their passports with them because an order could have been made against them to surrender the passports to the courts. Um, that is because of there is that fear of absconding. Um, there are also a lot of people that are actually blacklisted. Um, I think another one being that they are actually for security offenses. Um, so those are the circumstances that um, a person can actually be strip off their passport. Um, that is majority of it that's the decision by um, the judges. All right, thank you, Vichy. So essentially what you're saying is that an imposition of a travel ban is allowed if it's within the powers of the Director General of Immigration. Yes, it's that is according to what the director is saying. Okay. It has okay. to derive from a legislation to give them that power of authority to impose the travel ban. So if there isn't one, then it's not valid and it's bad in law. Okay. All right. Thanks, Beatrice. All right, Rashira, do you have anything else to add on this point on travel ban? Perhaps you can share what the minority in this decision said. Uh, basically, when it comes to this issue about travel ban, the panel was unanimous in this case, right? So... Um, that issue is whether uh, DG has an unfettered discretion to impose this travel ban against Maria Chin. Unfettered means vast power, lah, discretion. So uh, when arriving in this decision, the judges have uh, three sub-questions when they decide on this issue. So firstly, it's on the facts, whether it's uh, lawfully imposed on the circular. So based on the facts, they actually banned her because According to that circular, she has, uh, you know, memburukka nama negara. Hence, that is the grounds for her travel ban. So that was one sub-question. The second sub-question is um, whether the law generally allows the DG to impose the travel ban. And thirdly, if um, even if the law uh, allows such uh, imposition of <coughs> travel, travel ban, so whether this travel ban uh, is val uh, whether this uh, is pursuant to a valid law. So in general, um, Article Nine of our Constitution actually guarantees a uh, citizen the right to move freely throughout Malaysia uh, and to reside in any part of Malaysia. So our Constitution, but it doesn't guarantee freedom of movement to people outside of Malaysia. Um, but I think it has been decided in this case, um, provided it is accordance with the law, the federal constitution actually guarantees the right to travel abroad um, freely. So uh, the judges in this cases, uh, sorry, in this case, actually held that uh, 
the Immigration Act does not empower the DG to issue a circular banning a person with valid passport um, on the basis that that person memburukkan nama kerajaan atau negara. So technically, the DG in executing this circular against Maria Chin is actually exercising this discretion or power um, beyond his or her powers or jurisdiction. So naturally, it's contrary to the natural justice and hence, you know, uh, also contrary to the federal constitution. Yeah. So that's my input on that. All right. Thanks, Shira. So can I just go back a bit and ask you um, something about you, some, something that you've mentioned just now? You said that the right to travel is actually a fundamental right provided under our federal constitution, right? Um, under Article 9, for Malaysians, we have the right to move freely. So for right to travel abroad freely, uh, it comes under Article 5 of the Federal Constitution, according to this law, uh, according to this uh, case. I see, I see. All right, thanks for the clarification. So I'll reserve our questions at the end. So let's move on to the second part of our discussion today, which is on basic structure doctrine. Like perhaps, Beatrice, again, do you want to start telling us what did the majority decide and how? Yeah, okay. Uh, the second issue is whether or not the Section 59A of the Immigration Act removes the power of the court from hearing immigration cases or judicially reviewing any acts or decisions that is done uh, by the DG, um, except only in procedural non-compliant cases. So this section essentially is known as the ouster clause. Um, in the present case, Maria Chin's lawyers actually argued that the basic structured doctrine in Malaysia's constitution meant that the parliament cannot remove the powers of the court so essentially, the basic structure uh, doctrine, which is also known as the BSD, simply means that you cannot remove certain features from the constitution. So the court's powers are inherent in the constitution itself, and it cannot be subjected um, to the whims and fancies of the government as they like. Um, according to the majority, the majority held that uh, Section 59A is valid, um, the BSD doesn't apply in Malaysia and the constitution does not explicitly incorporate the doctrine and the courts cannot import the doctrine into the constitution. So this is also because um, article 121 uh, sub 1 of the federal constitution, it states that the jurisdiction of the court, um, this phrase, as may be conferred by or under the federal law, um, it's because of this phrase. So the majority held that a section 59A was actually seen to be consistent with Article 1 to 1. And that is basically what this means is that Section 59A is valid um, because it only limits the court powers and it doesn't exclude it entirely because you are allowed to review cases when it comes to procedural non-compliance. Uh, non so majority held that um, Section 59A, they don't seek to prohibit the court scrutiny in absolute terms but to limit that scrutiny to procedural non-compliance. So they also held that, of course, in cases where it concerns the jurisdiction and the power of the court, absolutely, then they will strike it down because it offends the, the basic structure doctrine. But in the present case, um, if you're looking at Section 59A, it doesn't exclude it entirely. So that's why the majority held that um, Section 59A is actually valid. Okay, um, Beatrice, maybe you can tell us why is Section 59, capital A, does not entirely exclude the court's power again, like just in one sentence? Um, yeah, so that is because if you look at Section 59A, the ouster clause, it says that you are not allowed to judicially, judicially review the DG's any act or decisions done by him unless or except in cases where it relates to procedural non-compliance. So only where in cases where there is an issue um, in terms of the procedure, then yes, you may 
basically file a judicial review against that decision. But for any other cases, then no, you're not allowed to. All right, thanks for clarifying. All right, now Shira, can you share what the minority decide in this case? Yes, uh, thank you, Jack. Thank you, uh, Beatrice. Uh, before I uh, move on to that doctrine of basic structure, I would just like to uh, correct what I mentioned before, that the majority judges did not actually decide that's a right to travel abroad. So, yeah, I would just like to make a correction to my statement there. So, um, when okay, so regarding the issue of doctrine of basic structure. Um, firstly, I would like to just paint an overview of the Immigration Act. So when it comes to this case, a person under the Immigration Act, a person can be prohib prohibited from traveling uh, abroad by the DG, which is procedurally correct by law without regard to its uh, constitutional validity. And uh, this decision is final, so meaning uh, it cannot be judicially scrutinized or reviewed by the courts and this is stated under 59A which is mentioned by Beatrice just now. Um, it can only be reviewed only if there is like procedural non-compliance and stuff like that. So in other words, if you're travel banned, you cannot object or be heard, uh, go before the DG, you know, say why are you travel banning me and uh, or why that person ought to travel abroad. So in this, because of this um, Immigration Act uh, give rise to this uh, doctrine of basic structure. So as a summary or overview of the minority judgment, in, in this case is that the minority of judges held that um, the issue of section 59, which excludes the right to be heard, and 59A, which excludes judicial review, is unconstitutional, right? So the minority of judges held that um, the basic structure doctrine establishes uh, in our constitution judicial power. So this judicial power uh, by the courts cannot be removed by the parliament and cannot be restricted by the parliament. So that's why the minority of judges in this case says that it is unconstitutional and has to be struck down, right? So what this means is that um, the minority judges are saying that the courts should be free to look into whether there are good reasons to ban Maria Chin from traveling abroad and not just limited to looking into all this procedural non-compliance. So as a whole, lah. and they also, confirm that parliament cannot make any law as it pleases, especially it cannot make uh, laws that is contrary to the federal constitution or offends the constitution. So technically, um, 59A, uh, according to the minority judges, is an obstacle uh, because it excludes the right to be heard in effect, which is section 59. So uh, this exclusion of right to be heard goes against natural justice and obviously this cannot be the intention of uh, the constitution right um so this minority judgment is actually based on several justifications and there were very lengthy analysis of the federal constitution as well as the history behind it but I'm going to touch mainly on two points that the minority judges actually highlighted when, it, when they reach this decision. So basically, the first one is Article 4 and Article 1 to 1 of the Federal Constitution. So Article 4, if you look at the Federal Constitution, it basically says that um, any law that is inconsistent with the Constitution uh, is void. So technically, uh, no act of any public body is immune to is immune from the scrutiny of Article Four, and the judiciary, the courts, is the organ um, tasked to interpret the law under Article One to One, which is 
the power, the judicial powers. So, um, so this two provision forms the basic structure of uh, the federal constitution. And um, one of the judges in the dissenting judgment actually said that um, the power of constitutional judicial review under Article 4 of the federal constitution is fundamental and essential, uh, is an essential feature of the constitution, which cannot be amended and cannot be removed by the legislation. So technically, um, Section 59A is limiting the judicial powers um, to administrative power only when it's supposed to be a definitive and specified constitutional power of judicial review, right? To actually declare any enacted law being unconstitutional um, for its inconsistency with the federal constitution. So to limit to limit the judicial powers to something administrative is uh, obviously encroach the independence of the judiciary lah, by taking away such powers under the federal constitution. Uh, so that is part of it. And then there is also the bit where um, the minority judges held that by reading 59A literally, it is obviously an Oster clause. So um, because under the Immigration Act, uh, the courts cannot examine or study the consti constitutionality of any executive action taken by the DG or its officers. So this limits its area and hence uh, it's stripping the court's judicial power under the federal constitution. Um, so basically that's about it uh, when it comes to section 59A, which is the Oscar Cross. Uh, this in effect actually um, affects section 59, which is uh, excluding the right to be heard. So if you look at section 59 of the Immigration Act, it says um, no person and no member of a class of persons shall be given an opportunity of being heard before the minister or the DG uh, in the case of uh, the state authority makes any order against him in respect of any matter under this act or any subsidiary legislation made under this act. So yeah, it excludes right to be heard. So this is very clear that uh, Section 59 it sort of leaves no room for interpretation. It's very clearly that it excludes natural justice uh, and exclude procedural fairness because you basically don't allow people to be heard uh, before the courts. So based on that, uh, the minority judges actually say that this is inconsistent with the federal constitution, hence it is unconstitutional and invalid. Yeah. Okay, thanks, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think it's very clear yeah. that from what both Beatrice and Shira mentioned, it's actually two opposing arguments that the judges have taken. So on this regard, we have a question from our viewer. I'll put it on the screen. Hi, do you think that this case is a good precedent to follow, be followed? Also, do you agree personally with the position taken by the majority judges in this case, especially on this point of basic structure doctrine? So I guess it's just a personal take question. Okay. Uh, yeah. To answer, to answer um, Isni Ahmad's question, I think when it comes to basic structure doctrine, um, one thing that we need to consider is the argument, um, the relationship between the basic structure doctrine and also Article uh, 4 sub 1 of the Federal Constitution and what was it all about in the judgment. So, um, for what I gathered from the judgments, right, basic structure doctrine doesn't and shouldn't apply in cases on whether the legislation is consistent with the constitution. This is because the basic structure doctrine is our is supposed to be on constitutional amendments. So whether or not the legislation is consistent with the constitution, it is an article for, for situation. So for example, if you're looking at the three cases that was argued in the majority decision, right, 
um, you have Sabine Jaya, your Idra Gandhi, and also your Amanundo. Those cases actually dealt with the 1988 amendments of the federal constitution back then, where it strips uh, judicial power of the constitution. So that concerns basic structure because it has to do with constitutional amendments. But in this present case, right, you're looking at um, a just legislation and whether or not that is consistent with the constitution. So in the present case, if you think about it, actually, and um, the basic structure doctrine actually doesn't even arise. So I, I, this is from what I understood from um, the majority judgment, and this was actually their reasoning as to why they were actually in favour of um, the older cases which has preceded and did not want to upheld what was argued in Samanya Jaya, um, Sivarasa and all that. All right, thanks, Beatrice. Shira, what's your take on this? Um, so basically, he is asking personally, do we agree with the majority uh, judges? Yeah, um, personally, yeah. I would... I would be on the side of the minority judges because, um, <laughs> yes, because like it's limiting the courts to only administrative uh, review. So this, it's like you're trying to make room and uh, it's not very clear. And according to the rule of law, law, the term law has to be clear and consistent. So when the federal constitution states that um, the courts have judicial power to review uh, on certain statutes, then I don't think that it should be limited, like probably certain statutes say it's limited to only procedural or it's limited to only uh, some non-compliance or it's limited to only certain uh, conditions are met. So this gives rise to a lot of inconsistency. So personally, I I would actually go to the side of the minority judgment. Yeah. yeah. No, sorry, just, just to um, add on to what Shara has said, right? I, I actually was uh, on the dissenting side also um, until I went further and tried to look back at the origins of the basic structure doctrine. You know, you are supposed to understand where it stems from, where it derived from, um, which is why we actually have to go back to India and um, all that. And I think Mary actually dealt with this issue also. Uh, she was talking about how when it comes to Article 4, you cannot use that as a general provision to strike down any legislation which you think that it's inconsistent with the Constitution. Um, you're not supposed to do that because Article 4, the reason that it is there is to protect the supremacy of the constitution and it's not supposed to be there for you to bulldoze any legislation which you think um, you know is inconsistent so i think she dealt quite a bit um, with this as well all right thank you for your personal take on this i guess there's no other questions maybe i can ask my own questions benefit of being the moderator here <laughs> I think the, the, the benefit for just for the sake of benefiting our audience today, right? Can I ask this question? I know Beatrice have actually answered this, but when can authorities actually impose a travel ban on any Malaysians? Like, I know you listed some examples. Maybe you can reiterate those. Yeah, uh, sure. So, as I as I mentioned earlier, usually these travel bans or blacklists black only happens... Uh, where you are declared a bankrupt because in that case in a situation where you are declared a bankrupt you are not allowed to leave the country um, if so right you actually have to get prior consent or approval from the authorities uh, first then you're able to do so uh, there have been a lot of cases where people have been blacklisted or stopped in the airport they're not allowed to go wherever they want to be because they didn't pay for ptptn loans uh, there are things to do with Financial Securities Act, your Income Tax Act. Those um, offences usually also will be blacklist. But um, if I'm not mistaken, I, uh, if I may be correct, actually majority of the people in Malaysia who actually have been blacklisted or uh, you know have a travel ban imposed on them are 
those who are actually involved in security offenses. Um, but I think that I there are quite a few websites that you are able to key in your IC and check whether or not you are blacklisted. But there is no one general um, website that allows you to do that. I think it's government Malaysia, uh, malaysiagov.my or something like that. You are yeah, I think there is a... Them. Yeah, there is a link in yeah, right. the but immigration it's, department. It's all over the place. Yeah. You go to the immigration website and check. You can go to your uh, income tax website and check. Uh, you can, you know, one by one do that. Lah. Yeah, so a little bit to add on on that. So basically, under the Immigration Act, the DG has that sort of power. But in this case, uh, Maria Chin's case, the issue is whether they went uh overboard did they exercise this power uh in excess of their jurisdiction so to answer your question provided it's accordance with the law they have the power to travel ban you so like what Beatrice says there is a list of uh, authorities that have the power to um restrict your uh restrict your right to travel abroad right so uh, I think some of, I have encountered some of my previous friends also, they have been stopped at the custom because they didn't fully pay their PTPTN. So yeah, students yeah. pay your PTPTN. Yeah. <laughs> so they are stopped there. So, um, but there is a link, uh, there is a link uh, in the immigration website for you to check whether you are banned from traveling or not. So that is basically the general rule. If it's, according to the law and within their powers then yes they have the power to travel ban you yeah. all right thank you um i think we have a question about the ns mimic approach but it's on the emergency ordinance i'm so sorry mr jashin <laughs> maybe I, you can just you can take that offline <laughs> yeah we'll take that offline we will talk to you later on but yeah because yeah, we're, yeah. uh, we're a bit um constrained on time perhaps we can also address that question in the comment box over there also uh, the answers yeah sure sure there. sure all right so i guess that is all that we have today but in short before we end this session we've talked about the minority and the majority decision of this case of marachi nabula and then we talk about both the travel ban imposed on her and the basic structure doctrine in detail. And we also had Beatrice and Shia share about their personal views on this decision. Right. So I guess that's the end for today's session. And to our viewers, thank you for joining us this afternoon. And we hope to see you soon again. Stay thank tuned. You everyone. Thank you, everyone. I think we have Thanks, another Jack. session next week. So yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks for, for organizing this, Jack. All right, no problem. Bye. Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye.